Hey everybody, Bill and Deb. Hi there. You look awfully comfortable. I am. You are? I absolutely am. Yeah, and you're, we're sitting in the shade and it's got a slight breeze today. and It's not unbelievably yeah. hot. The weather is much better than it was, you know, a few <laughs> days earlier when the heat wave was coming through here in Indiana where we happen to be right now. Yes. Yeah. But uh, anyway, we have been working on a project. I guess I need to start with uh, what we did in the back of the van. Probably. Okay. Let's, uh, let's start with that right now. Anyway, um, what we've been doing here, if you'll remember, the, those of you that watch us, and I know I apologize for the shade and the lighting's not real good right here, but you see this, this tank sitting back there. Well, that is our auxiliary gray tank where we can pump the gray water off of the trailer into that tank and then simply drive to the dump station, you know, and hook up a regular uh, three inch sewer hose that you see right there and, uh, and go ahead and just dump it that way rather than uh, fighting with a blue boy and all that kind of stuff. Uh, what we intended, so what we ended up doing, uh, the tank used to set right here. And we ended up taking out the wall that we originally had here, which was framed out of uh, two by twos. In fact, here it is right here, saving it back in case I can use some material off of it. And then we cut a, a new wall uh, out of three quarter inch plywood and stood it up here and it's anchored very very well both on the top and the bottom and but we built it in such a way where the tank slid over here so we could move it over here and the reason why we did that is because we're opening this area up right here because we're going to be installing a uh, uh, eventually it will end up being a 600 amp hour uh, battery bank in here along with uh, two charge controllers and uh, 3000 watt pure sine wave inverter. Anyway, there'll be a lot of components going in here in this compartment down here. And uh, what we have right now, and let me show you this, and I'm gonna be embarrassed probably, aren't I dear? I have no idea. The panels, the panels up here, right now we have two 200 watt panels up here. And I imagine it's time for them to be cleaned. Don't you think? Oh, probably because we haven't cleaned them since we were at, uh, in Arkansas. Yeah. Well, our plan though eventually is to have four of those panels up there. Uh, and then of course we'll have two charge controllers because we'll do it in sets of two panels each. And eventually we'll end up with three 200 amp hour batteries back here. The heart of the system is going to be eventually uh, three of these batteries right here. This battery is a life pole for, you know, lithium iron phosphate, 200 amp hour battery from a company called Power R Us. And I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. And what's neat about this battery is, uh, you know, it's all pretty much self-contained and they are Bluetooth. So we can monitor the performance of the batteries via Bluetooth on each individual battery. So. Uh, the heart of the whole system will eventually be three of these batteries, but we're starting out with one right now. So what you'll have is three batteries side by side across the back here. And then there will be a console right here, which we've already got it to kind of sort of put together right here. Uh, this is just a simple setup and I'll explain why here in just a little bit. Uh, but this is a pretty simple straightforward setup the batteries come with a really really uh, Extensive manual. I mean, it's it's thin, but uh, if you have a basic knowledge of uh, Of solar systems, which you know, I have a basic knowledge <laughs> Just enough to be dangerous. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what Marvin said one time He said he knows he, he studies a lot and he knows he knew just enough to get him in trouble possibly <laughs> Well, that's the same with me, too But I also have a lot of people that I can uh, ask questions, you know, and that can help me with stuff But the manual is quite extensive and it explains things uh, very very well and real real easy to discern and we will go over that more uh, when we get uh, this basic little setup set up here eventually But my plan is right now What uh, what power us wants you to do? Uh, before you ever uh, turn on the Bluetooth or anything like that is make sure the battery is fully charged first 
Well, the only means that I have of charging the battery is with a charge controller and the uh, two panels that are on top of the van. So basically what we're gonna do here, before we do anything else, I've already just installed uh, two bus bars, of course a, a positive and a negative. And I'm simply gonna come off of uh, the battery, you know, and bring the negative in here and the positive into here, and then uh, come off of the panels into the charge controller, and of course from the charge controller into these bus bars. And then uh, we will be double checking uh, it with a meter to, until we know that it's uh, charged sufficiently before we start uh, downloading the app so we can look at the battery via Bluetooth and everything. Eventually, this system will power several things in the van. The system will power the pump over here. Uh, we're also going to end up with a 3000 watt inverter and the 3000 watt inverter will power the trailer when necessary, and uh, we'll also have a receptacle mounted uh, on the other side of the console so that we can power uh, our compressor right here. Uh, and eventually, our backup cameras and everything that we have will be powered by this system as well. So uh, there's several things that we're gonna be utilizing this battery bank for. Uh, not just powering the trailer uh, when we need to, but also, you know, powering other things as well. Where the battery is gonna fit, now I went ahead and uh, put these two befores down right here to hold that thing in place so it won't be sliding around. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide the uh, console board in and show you how that's gonna be. All right, this is the console board and how it will fit right here. Uh, what I'm doing right now is I'm just simply gonna go ahead and you know, hook up the bus bars to the uh, battery terminals right over there. And then uh, I've already got a wire coming down from the panels. I don't know if you can see it over there or not, but right over there. And I'm going to tie into those wires and come into my charge controller. And then, of course, come off the charge controller into those bus bars and, uh, you know, let the panels go to work uh, charging the battery. I have other components, of course, that would be going on this. But it's going to take time for me to figure out exactly how I want to fit everything on here. Um, so for now, I'm just going to do this. And I've got to do this anyway and bring the battery up to full charge before I could start connecting anything else to it anyway. Now, what I'm going to do is also I'm going to show you how I've got a cover that will go over this and protect it all. So I'll be right back. All right, this is the cover that will cover everything up, and then we can still utilize storage, uh, you know, on this cover right here. About the only thing that we'll be carrying uh, in this area right here is uh, our leveling blocks and uh, probably the bag that holds our uh, sewer. sewer. Uh, you know, if you'll notice, remember how I built that back there with those cross pieces to give it plenty of strength so that we wouldn't have a accident back there um, and damage the batteries eventually this uh, cover board will be hinged uh, somewhere back in there so that whenever i need to gain access to this uh, console right here i'll be able to just lift it up right here and, you know and hang it on a hook or something like that so i can have good access to the console right there now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and hook up the cables and get everything all hooked up and then we'll be right back we got this thing all hooked up and everything and before i begin let me stress this one more time i cannot stress this enough this setup as you see it right now is temporary okay when we get it all set up and start uh, getting everything squared away the way we want there will be a series of, of cutoff switches there will be a series of breakers um, there will even in, eventually be a different charge controller than this one right here but this is mainly just to get this battery charged up to specs over here uh, for what Power R Us calls for it to be so we can then uh, switch on the Bluetooth on the battery. But uh, they say that uh, they want you to bring the battery up to full charge first before you uh, try to connect it to its internal Bluetooth function on it. So that's what we're in the process of doing. Now, it's very simple the way I've got this set up right now got the wires coming down from the two uh, 200 watt panels on top which is a total of 400 watts and then uh, you know here's the wire coming in to the charge controller and then of course the charge wires coming out to the two separate uh, bus bars 
Now, when we started this thing up yesterday afternoon, and it was late in the afternoon, uh, the battery uh, showed 2.9 volts with a meter. Uh, of course, we got it all hooked up late in the afternoon, so there wasn't a whole lot of sun. I think the maximum yield on the panels at one point was 225 watts. And at that point, I think it was pushing in something like uh, 16 amps or something into the battery. I checked it just a little bit ago, and right now it's uh, uh, because of the cloudy day and we're under a shade tree and, you know, all kinds of things. Um, I think uh, the panels are pumping in around 40 or 50 watts and, you know, uh, applying uh, like uh, three or four amps to the battery. So, you know, it's going to take a little bit. So we're going to be running into town later and we'll be checking it periodically. But uh, that's what we have to do first. So I want to talk more about uh, the PowerRS batteries. Now, this particular one is a 200 amp hour uh, lithium iron phosphate battery, Life Pole 4, if you uh, would prefer to use that terminology. And... Uh, uh, this one, of course, is equipped with Bluetooth monitoring uh, within the battery itself. So we'll actually be able to monitor the functions of the battery uh, once we're able to fire that up. In addition to that, this one here is uh, it has a self-heating um, feature on it. So that, uh, you know, we were concerned about uh, possibly being in low temperatures uh, now and then in the van. We're not worried about a system like that in the trailer because we always, you know, the trailer is always, uh, uh, you know, it's climate controlled at all times. But here, since the van would be sitting outside, that was a concern. So we went with the one that's equipped with self-heating. Now they also have uh, a 200 amp hour battery that has uh, low temperature protection. And they also offer 100 amp batter 100 amp hour batteries as well uh, that uh, either have low temperature protection or the self heating feature as well. And the prices are very competitive. We will post a link uh, to the website, and you can go look for yourself. But uh, we're very impressed with the pricing and everything. And like I say, eventually we intend on having three batteries across here which will give us a total of 600 amp hours. Uh, we'll have uh, four panels on top. And let me say something about these panels on top while we're on the subject. Let me get this raised up here. These panels here that you're looking at, these are from uh, Bouge RV. These are 200 watt panels each, and they are what they call their 9BB series. They actually have nine bus bars per, um, per cell which makes them smaller uh, in size physically. But we are very, very, very impressed with these panels. At one point when I was uh, testing these panels, theoretically they should not be making more than 400 watts. Well, we had a brief period when we were testing them once when we had uh, proper exposure to the sun at the per perfect angle and everything, they actually made 420 watts. So, uh, there's no question about what we want to do next when we get ready to add two more panels on top those are the ones we're going to go with mainly because they'll fit the roof on top to give us a total of 800 watts potential solar uh, because they're smaller in size physically and they perform quite well and we're very impressed with that even Deb got impressed with that, didn't you? Absolutely, yeah. yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, yeah. it's uh, being without electricity in three campgrounds of the last three we've yeah. stayed in. <laughs> we just like, want to make sure that we're not without no, power all anymore. All of a sudden it was important. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, what we're going to do, uh, we're going to let this go ahead and charge up completely. The next video will be uh, how we uh, set up the Bluetooth function in the battery itself, and then we will show you how we can monitor the battery itself and that one will be coming shortly so we will eventually start building a playlist so you'll be able to refer to this playlist as we go this is the first in a series of videos that will be covering this system that we are building right here for now we're going to let you go though this is bill and deb with iron ride tiny house adventures and you know what we always say we're not camping we are living y'all get out there do some living and we'll talk to you again soon bye-bye now bye-bye